All right. So I think I'm live. Perfect. So I'm Dr. Stephen Bradley. I'm an anesthesiologist, clinical medical ethicist. I am also a Lieutenant Commander of the United States Navy. I am a Navy physician. I have been getting a lot of questions about military medicine and the military scholarships, I think, because it's kind of close to when people are getting acceptances to medical school, people are looking for a lot more information. So I am here to share what I've learned over the last, um, you know, couple years, if you will. Um, I think people are finding me because I did a, a video with Dr. Antonio Webb. He's an orthopedic spine surgeon with a fantastic YouTube channel. So definitely check that out if you haven't already, but people are going there and then coming to find me because I had some follow-up videos about military medicine. I was going to be a YouTuber back in 2020. The pandemic kind of inspired a lot of people, um, but it, you know, it was a lot of work. So I, I didn't post too many updated videos. I tried to like answer some comments as they came up and I turned my focus into podcasting. So I created the Black Doctors Podcast, which shares the stories of Black healthcare professionals with the goal of inspiring the next generation and of diversifying the healthcare workforce. I do have a episode that I share my entire experience of being on active duty. So definitely check that out. Um, you can see more about the podcast over on Instagram at Black Doctors Podcast or the website. Anyways, and to get that plug in there. So yes, I am a military physician. If I didn't say it already, my views did not represent the Department of Defense of the United States Navy. So folks are looking into the health profession scholarship program is probably one of the biggest ways that people join the military. It's offered by all branches, the Air Force, Army, and Navy. My perspective is mostly coming from the Navy side of things. With the health profession scholarship, you sign up as you're going into medical school, they pay for your tuition. They also provide a about $2,500 a month stipend that you use for the cost of living. Um, at the end of your commitment, you owe four years on active duty service to the military. So I'm going to try to answer some of the questions they received about this program, some of the good things, some of the bad things. Um, Good thing, you get some extra money. Um, that school's paid. You have student loans. You still might have to get some student loans because it's not going to cover all of your living expenses. $2,500 a month stipend, then you're going to have to take out some money. Um, so there's that. Um, the biggest reason when you're joining is like, what's your why? So I joined because of my family members that are in the military. That's why I joined. Um, if you join for the money, you're probably going to be disappointed. The once you join, you'll probably go to um, like officer development school for a couple of weeks during, after like your first year of medical school or so. And then they kind of leave you alone until third or fourth year, you start interviewing for residency programs. Um, you may do a rotation at a military hospital or not to kind of get your feet wet. And then you're gonna probably apply to the military match. This is gonna be a whole new video in and of itself about the military match and what that entails. But you are going to want to, I'll use the example that you're a general surgery resident or, or you want to go into surgery. I would strongly recommend when you approach that process that you request a uh, civilian deferment to complete your residency training. Again, that's a whole new video in and of itself, but um, they, I'll present the most simple of scenarios first and then go into a little bit more of the complex. With the simple scenario, you join um, by you do your military training, and then you come to match your fourth year. First, you're going to apply to the military match. It's a little stressful. Match is very stressful. It's a rough time of the year. You're going to be going on interviews. You have to apply to uh, the military first, and ideally, they give you that civilian deferment that you want. Of note, while you're applying, you're going to be interviewing at both civilian places as well as military places. 
So it's, you're doing double the work, but you're going to these interviews and you don't even know, we have to tell the civilian programs that I don't know if I'll be able to actually rank you because I may match in the military. So again, it's about twice as stressful as it otherwise would have been if you'd gone without the Health Profession Scholarship. So let's say the military says, okay, well, no, you're deferred to the civilian world. Now all the interviews matter more and you're gonna finish off the interview season, go through all the stress and hassle of matching and hopefully you have a dream match into um, the general surgery residency program of your choice. You're completely deferred. You'll go off and train for your five years. And then towards the end of that five years, once again, the rubber will hit the road. You will have partners that are signing jobs for three fifty a year, $400,000 a year. You'll have partners going off to fellowships, uh, trauma, or do breast surgery or plastics. And maybe you developed a love for some specialty, some subspecialty field of surgery. Well, unfortunately, now you have to talk with the military and say, hey, um, what are the odds that I can go to this fellowship program now? There's a chance they may allow you to continue just into indirectly into that fellowship training um, for additional time. Typically, it's a year for year plus one. So if it's a three-year fellowship, you're going to accrue additional four years of uh, service time. What's more likely to happen is they're going to want you to do a utilization tour. You're going to come on active duty and serve for at least a year. So you'll start serving that for your commitment. Um, you'll knock out that first year. Um, and then they may give you the option to go back for fellowship. So you owe three years, you go back for fellowship, you complete your three year fellowship. You just tacked on an additional um, four years. So you come back and finish at three years that you owe, you finish uh, four years and that's after that three year fellowship. So you see how the time grew, even though you only had that four year commitment, if you did that fellowship under the Navy's or under the military's watch, you would have done a year on active duty, you would have done um, the three years of fellowship, um, full time out service where you're getting a, a Navy salary, but you're a uh, civilian. And then you would have come back to finish out that initial three years on your contract. And then you would finish out four years that you accrued from um, taking the fellowship. So that four year commitment kind of ballooned to 11 years, just like that. Um, and that's the biggest thing is that the time it can easily grow and expand. Let's talk about pay. I broke this down in the video on Dr. Webb's um, on his page. And I think I also broke it down in a blog post on my website, stephenbradleymd.com. But the pay. So once you come on active duty as a surgeon, say you train out service, when you start um, your first year out, right, your friends just signed for 350 or 400, whatever it is, your salary as a military surgeon is probably going to be around like 130. If you're single, no kids, depending on where you're living, you're looking at about 120 to 130 um, a year. And there's different types of bonuses. That'll be a different video as well, where you can break down the pay table. You can look up the pay table easily, and it shows you like your time in service, which is going to be, I think they count the HPSB time as four years. So you'd be like a 03 or an 04 with four years of service. That's your base pay. Then there's like $6,000 a year board certification pay. There's uh, your bonus, your specialty bonus as a surgeon, which is probably like 50 or $55,000 a year. Uh, but it all adds up to uh, roughly like 120 or so. So not, not much compared to your civilian counterparts. And you can kind of track along those pay tables how much you'd make or over time. At some point, once you've paid off your commitment, you can actually sign for additional bonuses if you sign on for additional time with the military. Um, that was the best case scenario. And one thing to highlight is that a lot of times you're, you're working with recruiters, right? So recruiters are typically enlisted personnel. Occasionally you'll run across an officer that's recruiting um, medical corps personnel. And they may know a little bit more about what it's like to practice as a military physician, but it's rare that you're gonna find a military physician working on the recruiting side of things because we're more valuable doing what we do as physicians. So what more often than not, from the stories that I hear from people, what I've seen is you have enlisted folks kind of coordinating the recruiting efforts. If you're not familiar with the military, like, you know, there's two parts, there's enlisted, there's active, there's a uh, enlisted and officer ranks. Enlisted is kind of if you join straight out of high school, go to boot camp, um, kind of start from the bottom, work your way up. If you're an officer, you, you go through college, you go through ROTC, 
um, you go to the military service academy, you take a direct commission after college, right? And you're kind of a, a more of a leadership role uh, with responsibilities. Um, two different worlds, and I mean, it's just uh, a night and day. You know how you're how you're treated and and your responsibilities, what's expected of you. I say I like to say when you have recruiters uh, interviewing soon to be physicians or physicians for these jobs, they don't really know what physicians do on the civilian world or in the military. So you've got um, like my recruiter, when I was talking to him, he was enamored that anesthesiologist got a $60,000 bonus a year. Little did he know that we still make, you know, about a third of what our um, compadres make on the outside. Um, but, you know, for him, it was, it was a big deal. He kept talking about how much money that we make. I'm like, mm, okay, well, that's cool. And it's a, as a resident physician, as I did the FAP program, that was cool. I, the money was nice at the time, but financially, you know, you pay for it in the back end. So I highly recommend if you're considering these, seek out somebody that is active duty, preferably in the specialty that you want to go into. You talk about the day-to-day -day life that, that they have what it's like practicing in the military on active duty. Um, imperative, highly recommend that you do that. Um, yeah, because they just don't know. It would be the equivalent of, you know, you're interviewing for your first job as a surgeon at a hospital and they have like a medical assistant or um, yeah, like a medical assistant kind of interview you and show you around the hospital and talk to you about benefits and what it means to be a surgeon and what it's like to practice. Um, that's kind of how it is. And it's funny because they make it so stringent. Like I was talking to somebody who was like a pound or two overweight and they're just like giving them a really hard time trying to join when in reality they're going to bring you on and, and like significantly underpay you. Anyways, I digress. So I gave you the shortest option. Now, the longer option, what happens a lot of the times is there's the GMO community, um, whether it's flight medicine, dive medicine, uh, general medical officer. Uh, it's a lot more frequent with the Navy, but Army and Air Force also has similar pipelines where for Marines to go out to combat, they need a general practice doctor. You'll finish an internship in the military and then be deployed or, or have orders for two to three years at a time to be a general medical officer. You do primary care for active duty service members. Not crazy intellectually stimulating because, again, everybody's healthy. They get medically screened frequently. So... Say you want to do general surgery, you did HPSP, you apply for that civilian deferment, but you don't get the civilian deferment, you have to complete military match, you go into military match, you don't match, or you match at a military surgery program. Um, you match as an intern, the military at some point in your intern year gets to decide, do you continue on and complete residency, or do you leave and go the GMO community or, or route? If you go GMO, which again, you may or may not have much of a choice in which option you take, um, you will get an or orders for two years or three years and go to Camp Lejeune, work with Marines, go to flight school if you're uh, in flight medicine, go to dive school. So intern year doesn't count towards your commitment, right? You finished HPSB, you owed four years. Internship doesn't count. Um, once you start in your billet as a general medical officer, you know, say it's a two year billet, well, you've paid back two years of your service commitment. You now have the option of saying, hey, I'll just knock out the other two years and then go back and apply civilian for residency in general surgery, right? Which would, if you would start five years after completing medical school, right? You finished medical school, did an intern year did four years as general medical officer to pay back your commitment. And now you're applying to start residency, right? That's an option. Uh, but then you'd be finished in essentially 10 years after you finish medical school. The other option is you complete two years of general medical officer uh, assignment, and then you apply back to Navy or Army or Air Force general surgery. Well, if you get accepted, you go back to residency, you owe four years in general surgery. And that time, uh, you accrue time as you um, pay back your time. So what that means is at the end, um, you would still owe at least three, three to four years of practice as a general surgeon. 
I think they come out only four years, um, which puts you at, in terms of total years of service, because remember you signed up before, but by now you've done a year of internship, you've done two years general medical officer, you've done additional four years um, of residency, and now you owe uh, four years. So it puts you back at that 11 years of service, at least. Now, God forbid you wanted to become a plastic surgeon, because after at some point in time, you would, you know, ask for permission, they'd say, okay, sure, because we're short on plastic surgeons, you can go out and do plastic surgery. Um, that still is a year for year plus one. So you would accrue uh, an additional four years on active duty by doing that year of fellowship. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a broad overview of the health profession scholarship program, some of the ins and outs and the things that they really don't teach you um, or re recruiters won't really tell you. I mean, again, they're trying to fill a quota. They're trying to get their, their slots filled. They're not really going to tell you that. Um, happy to discuss more. It's just I've been getting a lot of uh, questions and comments and, and feel free to hit me up on Instagram at Stephen Bradley MD. Um, but I don't have time to sit down and chat with everybody. I think I've sat with three or four different people in the last week, all for like 20, 30 minutes at a time to discuss what these different programs mean. So clearly there's a need. People want to know this information. So I'm going to do a couple of videos to talk about it. Um, they're probably not going to be fancy. Probably not going to have a lot of like graphics and whatnot and all that cool stuff that YouTubers usually do. But um, yeah, so this video is about health profession scholarship program. In the future, I'll talk about the financial assistance program. I'll talk about the HSCP. And then I'll talk about what practice is like in the military. And finally, kind of what the residency programs are like. So if you like this video, share it, all of the typical YouTube stuff. Um, feel free to leave questions or comments below. And I'll, I think this format is pretty easy because I'll just do a live video and hopefully save it and it'll stay up here. Um, and I guess people will find it somehow. Um, anyways, thanks for joining. And reminder, these are my views, not those of the Department of Defense, United States Navy, all that. Uh, check out the Black Doctors podcast available wherever you listen to podcasts. Where you'll have inspiring stories of Black healthcare professionals. Um, yeah. And the end the stream.